security. Hey, uh, hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. So, uh, let's have a look at today's agenda. It's pretty simple. I will say a few words about what JBDS is, and then we will have a demo about Coendless features. <coughs> and at the end, uh, you can ask questions, and I will try to answer them or hear my colleague from JBDS QE team. So, uh, JBDS, JBDS is basically, it's a, it's a IDE, it's a bunch of plugins that support JBoss and related te technology, such as Hibernate, AS Drews, JSF Maven, Seam, and also a lot, a lot, of, a lot of others. Uh, I'm not going to name them all here because it's a very big list. So JBDS is free. Uh, you can download uh, Universal Installer at uh, devstudio.jboss.com uh, slash download. Uh, the installer runs on all of the supported platforms, uh, which is uh, Linux, uh, Windows, and OS X. Uh, also in uh, JBDS 6, which is the newest version, we introduced uh, PIOE, which stands for Bring Your Own Eclipse. Uh, you can install uh, JBDS into your Eclipse, so it might come handy to those of you who have Eclipse with uh, their plugins already installed and you just want to start uh, using JBDS. Uh, newest version of JBDS is targeting uh, Eclipse 4, which is also called Juno. And uh, uh, JBDS 6 was a short release. We did it uh, roughly in a six month. And uh, we also, during this uh, period, we moved uh, source codes from SVN to Git. So now you can find us on uh, GitHub. You just uh, have to search for JBoss tools. Uh, okay, so now why JBDS? Uh, imagine that uh, you have two runtimes. The first one is, for example, EAP 6.0.1, and the second one is uh, S7.1.1. Uh, what you have to do is uh, to get this uh, get these runtimes. You have to search them on the internet and download them. And then uh, you would like to create your application. So uh, let's say uh, you will choose uh, the Maven Arch type, for example, the Java EE6. And uh, what you have to do is uh, type something like this into, into your uh, terminal. Uh, you have to know the GAB of the Arch type. And uh, you have to decide which version you want to use because uh, not every version might be suitable for your runtime. And also, if you use uh, EAP as your runtime, then uh, you should use, you should uh, set the enterprise, enterprise flag to true. And uh, so now let's imagine that we have created this, uh, this, this project and we would like to deploy it on OpenShift. So, Again, what we have to do is uh, look at, for example, on getting started guide of uh, OpenShift and see that uh, they have some uh, command line interface like RHC. So you will install it, uh, you will create application. Uh, for example, you will say that you want it to run on JBoss A7. Then you might want to add some cartridge uh, then you have to do some uh, magic with Git. And uh, also what you have to remember is to add the OpenShift profile into pom.xml. And also you have to remember to have the deployments and .openshift folders. And to remember all this stuff, it might take some while. And uh, how to do this stuff is there is a uh, JB, uh, is you can use the JBDS 6 where uh, you get all this stuff under one roof because we simply just want to get things done and uh, not to remember everything. So 
uh, what you will see when you will start your uh, JBDS is a JBL Central. It is basically the same as was in uh, JBDS 5. Uh, here are examples. Uh, then we have some, uh, some news blocks from uh, JBoss World. And uh, there is a second tab, software update, where uh, you can get some third party software. Uh, for example, uh, all, the, all, the, uh, all the plugins are uh, tested and they are supported. Uh, it looks like the internet is really slow, so it might take some while to refresh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, let's now talk about uh, these examples. Uh, they are uh, Maven Arch type. Uh, they all use uh, state-of-the-art technologies. Uh, for example, Enterprise Java Beans 3.1, CDI 1.0, and so on. Uh, they basically, they are basically doing uh, the same thing. Uh, the interface looks the same, but they are using uh, different technologies. So you can see that this one is uh, HTML5, then we have ref refaces, grid, and so on. Uh, if I pick one of these, for example, Java EE, Uh, I can see that there is some brief description. And also what's new here is that I can create a blank project. So if you don't want any demo code, you can just uh, select this and you will get the, uh, the clean archetype and no demo code. So I will now choose the HTML5 one and uh, the first thing I have to do is uh, to pick some uh, target runtime. Now I don't have any, and as you can see, the requirements are met because it requires uh, EAP6 or AS7. As you can see here it's written. Yeah. Uh, so uh, now there are two buttons install and download. So I can download the runtime di directly from the ID. Uh, the listed runtimes here are only the ones uh, which works with uh, archetypes. So I can download a 7.1, for example, or I can choose EAP, uh, which cannot be downloaded right from here because you, need, you have to log in. Uh, but it will at least provide you with the direct, direct link, uh, li uh, link where you can log in and download it. So for this purpose, I have already downloaded the EAP 6.0.1. .1, and uh, now we can see that the requirements are met. And uh, what is here is a warning that uh, he, that, uh, he can't find any uh, EAP repository configured in my, in my settings XML. So it's very simple to fix this. I will just click here. And uh, oh, by default, there is an online Maven EAP repository. And uh, also what you can do if you have the EAP uh, on your disk, you can just uh, click here, recognize AP repository, choose the, the appropriate folder, and it will get it recognized as EAP. Or for example, if you have uh, the WFK repository, it also gets uh, recognized as WFK. So I will hit OK. And now uh, what's here is that he shows me what kind of changes he will do to 
my uh, settings XML. So this is how it looked like before. I had nothing here. And now he adds the, the repository <coughs> and also <coughs> sets the profile as a active. So I will hit finish. And now you can see that warning is gone and I'm ready to create my project. So here I can uh, set JV. And also uh, what you can see that the enterprise flag was set to true. If I would uh, select AS, uh, then it would be set to false. Uh, also what has changed in, uh, EA, in uh, JBDS6 is uh, that we are now using uh, JDF stacks for the examples. And that's the, that's the technology which uh, determines the right version of R type for your, uh, for your uh, runtime. <coughs> so I will create a project. Uh, now what happens is that it uh, gets downloaded, uh, imported into your workspace, and uh, it gets configured. So uh, what we saw, uh, we saw this, uh, the runtime download and detection, adding repositories. And uh, now what we can do is that this, uh, this project uh, has some, uh, some profiles. So we can easily activate and deactivate them using uh, Maven, select Maven profiles. And here I can see all the profiles which are avail available. Uh, you can see that there is a profile from settings XML and another five of them are from the project pub. Or if I would have uh, some parent project, then uh, uh, the profiles from parent project would, would be also listed here. So I will for now keep it as it is. And uh, also what we have here, uh, we have Maven configurators. Uh, that's the feature which can help you when, uh, for example, you are adding some, uh, some dependencies. So let's say uh, I, I want to add the JSF dependency. So I'll just uh, type JSF API, for example, and I will choose this one, hit OK. And now what happened is uh, that the Maven uh, figures, figures out that I've, I've just added the JSF dependency. And uh, just to make sure I will refresh the project. And he configures it in a way that he will activate the JSF facet on the project, as you can see here. Uh, project facets. And I can see that the JSF facet is uh, activated and it's set to 2.1 version because I've added the 2.1 version of uh, JSF. So uh, now what I can I do is that uh, probably I would like to deploy my HTML5 application on OpenShift. So it's really easy uh, because uh, the OpenShift server adapter mimics the classic uh, Eclipse WTP server adapter. So you are working with uh, OpenShift in the same way as you would work with any other uh, runtime, for example, AS or EAP. So what can I do is uh, just to hit run on server. Uh, I don't have it defined, so I will choose the OpenShift. <coughs> I have to uh, set my connection. Uh, if you don't have uh, an account on OpenShift, you can just uh, click here and uh, create it. So I'll hit finish and uh, uh, my credentials get verified. So it's okay and I would like to create an application on OpenShift. I want to create a new one, so I will name it, for example, HTML5. Uh, I will use EAP6. And also I can set the cartridges 
right from the IDE. Uh, what is here is that we have added the cartridge suggestions. So if you will select, for example, that you want to use uh, PHP MyAdmin, it will also uh, say that uh, you should use the MySQL cartridge because it would probably makes no sense to use the first one without the second one. For now, uh, I don't I don't need any ca cartridge, so I will just move on and I will select that. I want to use the, my HTML5 mobile application from my workspace. Hit the next. And uh, you have to set the SSH keys. What you can do is that you can, if you don't have any, uh, you can create a new SSH key directly from the IDE. You just, it's uh, very simple. You just say OK, uh, name it somehow. Okay, and finish. So now here's uh, my new, here's my new uh, SSH key. And uh, now I can uh, hit finish. And what happens is that uh, my public part of SSH key gets uploaded on my OpenShift account. And also he creates uh, the new application on OpenShift. So it might take a while because of the connection. So we just have to wait. So now he's uh, the calling the repository, and he's done. So what happened now to my application is that he automatically created the deployments and dot OpenShift folders. Uh, he also added the OpenShift profile into my POM XML. So uh, if you don't have the profile, it will be created for you and uh, you don't have to think about it. So now I want to run it on OpenShift. Uh, as you may remember, normally you would have to use Git. Uh, of course, it's also used in here, but it's uh, quite hidden. Uh, you are just, uh, you just uh, hit uh, run on server and you are not doing any pushing or something like that. And also, it might take a while. So now what you can see that uh, my OpenShift server is uh, visible under the server's view. And uh, what I can do is tail files, so I can see the EAP logs. Uh, also, I can do port forwarding, and I will show you exactly what this do after the pushing is done. It will take like a minute, so you can have a break. <laughs>
So, I can see the AP locks. So I can see that for now it's stopped and uh, after the pushing is done, the EAP started automatically and uh, I will be able to access my application. Okay, so it's starting. It's a good sign. Okay, finally, there is my application, and uh, since this is a really low resolution, you can see the proper desktop version. to also show you is a uh, so port forwarding so what you can do is to tap on this wizard and uh, what it does that it uh, it will forward the ports of uh, the remote EAP, and I will start them all. And now in, uh, in your browser, you can just type localhost on port 9990. And what you can see is that there is a web, web interface of the EAP which is running uh, in OpenShift. So, it's uh, quite cool. And uh, what we have here next is uh, support for, for your mobile <coughs> uh, web application. And uh, it's called Browser Sim. It's visible by default only under JBoss perspective. And here is uh, this toolbar item. And uh, so now this is uh, my browser, my mobile browser, and uh, I can type the address. So I can see how it's going to look like on my on, on my uh, on my mobile phone. And what I can also do is uh, to change the skins, which basically is uh, changing the resolution. So for example, now I'm using uh, the Galaxy tap and I want to see how my application is going to look like for example on a, uh, on iPhone so here it is or for example if you if there isn't the device you are looking for then you can uh, pretty easily define the one by yourself uh, here are the devices and you can just add or uh, name it somehow uh, set the resolution of your device and uh, you will see how it's going to look like. Uh, and this is the without, without the skin. This one. So uh, the mobile browser simulator is a WebKit based 
That's the basically the same as is used in uh, Android, iOS, BlackBerry, Bada, and a lot of other mobile operating systems. Uh, you can access the application. Everybody here can do it if you are interested on this, uh, this web page. So uh, if I wouldn't be talking so much, I would uh, create my HTML5 application. Uh, I, will, I would uh, download the runtime. I would uh, set my EAP repository in my settings XML and deploy it on OpenShift within, I don't know, five minutes maybe, if the connection is good, of course. And uh, another topic, I would like to, I would like to show you another feature. Is uh, that uh, is uh, converting uh, from Eclipse to Maven and vice versa? Uh, maybe some of you have uh, some project and you would like to convert convert it to Maven. So we have a way how to do it very easily. So. I will just create my dynamic web project. And uh, example, I will add the JSF into it. So this is a classic Eclipse-based project with uh, JSF libraries. Uh, now when I want to convert it, I will just uh, hit configure, convert to Maven project. I will set the GAV of my project. Since it's a dynamic web project, I would like to set packaging to war. And now what happens when you press finish, that uh, we use uh, Maven source lookup to identify all your, all your class path dependencies. Uh, by default, uh, the uh, Maven source lookup is uh, searching them on a JBoss Nexus repository but you can also, in preferences, define a repository uh, by yourself. So if you have any uh, which you would like to use, you can define it there. And, uh, but it must be uh, Nexus-based, otherwise it, it wouldn't work. So I will convert my, uh, my application. And uh, as you can see, the Form XML gets created. I can see that uh, the dependence is here. And if, if you want proof, then I can just build it. So, uh, build success. That's, all, that's good. Uh, maybe if you change your mind, you can also convert the Maven project to Eclipse. And uh, this feature is uh, quite well hidden because it's visible only under Project Explorer. Uh, you can see that, uh, uh, sorry, uh, under Package Explorer. Uh, under Project Explorer, it's not visible because uh, you need to have uh, this and uh, it's not visible under Project Explorer. And I will just hit here. And uh, what happens is that uh, he will uh, download the the libraries and add it to my class path. So now I'm, now I'm back to uh, Eclipse project, and uh, the Maven Maven stuff has been disabled. The POM XML is still here, but it's he's not using it anymore. So what else? Uh, we also, uh, in JBDA 6, edit uh, as you type validation for CDI, so you don't have to anymore uh, save your, your Java file, and it gets <coughs> validated right away. And uh, also, there is a possibility to run Forge in debug mode. So that's all. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I will try to answer them, or my colleague here. Any questions? No, thank you.
thank you. Uh, I hope that you will start using JVDS. It uh, makes your life easier. Thank you, everybody.